watching or listening Liam Harkey here today with another episode of presenting champions today joined by Kieran Williams who has a very very inspiring story to share with us today um, beginning with his journey through um, amateur boxing over 48 fights he's had including hybrid boxing as well with four ounce and MMA gloves but we're also today going to be talking about much more than just fighting we're going to be talking about Kieran's journey through uh, psychosis and mental health a lot of which is drug induced and how he's overcome that, the lessons he's learned from that along the way. Very, very inspiring story and I've got to say very, very brave to actually speak out about this and raise awareness about everything that we're going to be getting into today. So like I was saying champ, thank you for coming on the show and everything. It's it's, it's awesome to have you with me today. Thank you. No worries. Awesome. Yeah. Rocking the Welsh flag as well, I can see behind you there. So I love it. So uh, brilliant. Now like I was saying, we've got some great stuff to talk about with your achievements because obviously there's four Welsh championships, there's a British championship and everything like that and there's, there's all these side of things. But before we get into all that, I'm going to go back to the very beginning, talk about your early life. So starting um, from... So I started boxing when I was uh, six, what it was, I was getting bullied in school. I was deaf in both of my ears. I was 80% deaf. Um, I couldn't speak properly and uh, I was getting bullied in school. So my father sort of got, got me into boxing then when I was six years old. Uh, and then from there on, uh, I won the World Championships when I was 10. Um, before that, I had an operation so I could hear again. I had to have learning. That's how we can speak today. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, uh, boxing really, really helped me through, uh, throughout my journey, like, you know. Yeah. Where are you originally from uh, in the beginning, for, for anyone who doesn't know? Uh, I'm from Czech Republic, yeah. 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 My mom's from, uh, my mom's from Czech Republic. Very cool. And how long have you been in Wales then? Because obviously you're obviously in Wales now and everything. I've in... been all my life. All my life yeah. I've been in Wales. Like, but uh, I was born here, like, you know. Yeah, so it's pretty much, pretty much home for you. Um, but I just knew there was a little bit of, uh, a little bit of, of other things going on. So. Okay, so you were being bullied. You had the you had the um the deafness, and that was obviously fixed and everything. You started progressing through boxing. Can you talk us through some of the highlights of your boxing? So obviously, quite a young age, uh, British Championship, Welsh Championship. Which ones are you most proud of? Um, just just share with us the highlights. That would be um, awesome. well, I'm proud of everything I've achieved. To be honest, I uh, I first won my uh, Welsh Championships when I was ten. And then I won it for the second time in a row when I was 11. Then the third time, two years after, when I was 14, I think it was. And then I came back. I had a bit of a break then. Um, came back when I was about 16 and won it again when I was 16. And then obviously, um, before, well, sorry, right? before that, I won the British uh, when I was 14. And then obviously won the Welsh. Sorry, it's a bit confusing, but I... <laughs> Won the Welsh when I was 16 and uh, went a bit downhill from there and like. Yeah, well, no, it makes sense. I mean, it's good to get the, the highlights in there. And it was 48 fights, I think, you've had all together, I think you said. Yeah, yeah, eight. Yeah, it's good, it's good number of fights and, and mostly wins as well. Um, yeah. So, you know, very cool. Now, obviously, um, one of the things we're going to be talking about today is, is some of the hard times you've been through. and. Obviously, not to dwell on the negative, but to focus on how you sort of work through some of this this type of stuff. So obviously, the mental health on some of this stuff it, it basically started with drugs. I mean, am I right in saying that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, was what it was, right? I uh, I was having problems. I was having a lot of nightmares when I was younger, but and uh, they were you know scary. I was a kid, and I can remember most of them to this day. And uh, <clears throat> I think the doctors were had something wrong with me anyway, but uh, they didn't. They couldn't really quite work work way around there. Um, but when I was sixteen, I got involved, you know, into uh, drinking and stuff like that. And um, I had a British Championships like uh, a couple of months after I won a Welsh. So I was drinking before that, right? And before the British, I lost and then uh, started dating the school. Uh, things went a bit sideways then, and. Uh, got sacked from my job and then ended up on uh, 
cocaine, like, you know, that was my uh, my choice of drug anyway, cocaine and uh, alcohol, yeah. And uh, that's when that's when nightmares started beginning, like. Yeah. Well, like I was saying, you know, before, I mean, it's a very, it is actually a very brave thing to, to speak out about this. I don't, I don't know if you sort of appreciate that because it's you and everything, because it, but it is a very brave thing to, to sort of put this out there. So we'll talk about it. And like I say, never to probe anything negative, but just to, to help people I can inspire people with what you overcome. So, but if it ever gets too much anything that, that you're remembering, just let me know and we'll, we'll yeah. sort it. Of... But, so, all right, so you were using this, the cocaine, all this sort of stuff, starting from sort of 16 and, and alcohol as well. And then what started happening with it? I mean, was it like uh, visions, like voices, or was it mostly dreams, or what type uh, of thing? Experiences? So, I was uh, taken to school when I was 17, so I broke up with her when I was about 18, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then I started drinking heavy. Uh, and like I said, I got sacked from my job. That's when I first started. Um, started using cocaine. Um, it wasn't happening at first. Uh, obviously, it was a couple of years afterwards it started happening. Um, they were putting me on different types of me uh, medication. Uh, and it started happening when I was about... About 20, I think it was, 21. Uh, I started, uh, I was in work the one day. <clears throat> and uh, so, I don't know, it was like, I, I was in, like, as I was growing up, I could, you know, I hear stories of people hearing voices. I never believed they're like, but it's like, for example, the best way to describe it is like, yeah, pick up, uh, pick up like a glass of water. This was like, pick up the armor and smash this guy over. <laughs> It was crazy. Um, and I didn't feel right at all. I couldn't outthink that thought. And I had to literally run out the house and sort of like tell I was with my father at the time. I had to tell him, look, I, I don't feel good at all. I need to uh, I need to go home. He was like, you know, blah, blah, blah. Do you want to phone a doctor? So I phoned the doctor. Told him he said that I had a bit of uh, induced psychosis. So uh, things went on from there. I was all right for a while. They put me on a bit of medication and then after they got me off this medication, I went even worse. I started um, hearing more voices of doing things to myself. I uh, slicing myself, slicing my face, um, and things went down as bad as I started buying weapons and stuff. And think people were after me. All like, I, I don't was crazy, and uh, and it went down to as bad as I started uh, going into Satanism and all that. I'm writing crazy, crazy, crazy stuff on my head really like not really horrible horrible stuff but and it's it's quite hard to talk about really because uh it's quite scary what your mind can do you know and people started looking at me different the word started spreading and uh yeah you know it's really scary bad yeah it is it is like i was saying i mean you know if, if anything gets too much when we're talking about this just just let me know because i don't want to be you know yeah. push you or anything that's I'm a very relaxed interviewer so I don't want to be pushing for anything that's, that's too much so let me know if it, if it ever gets to that that point but because I respect how hard it, it must be to, to get into this type of thing because you know I got mates who've, who've been through this as well um, there are people in my extended family um, so not, not my immediate family but like further out who've, who've had really bad mental health like schizophrenia and stuff um, and I used to go out with a girl as well who, who had bipolar really badly from, from yeah. drugs. So I know, I do know sort of how it goes in that way, but I know it's not not, not easy to talk about. So you were hearing the voices and you were hear, hearing this and they were obviously telling you to do bad stuff. Um, and, and you mentioned about writing things and, and things like that. And I don't want to push for this, but, what, but it was like evil type of stuff. Was it like, like, like very dark from the sound? Uh, well, so I didn't really catch you there, sorry. Oh, no, I was just saying, like, you know, so when you were hearing this stuff and you were, like, writing things down, it, it was, yeah. like, satanic, you are saying. Yeah, um, like the... yeah, well, I still got some writings on the, on the door, but I don't think see, and they painted all of it, I like. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I, I was writing, I was engraving stuff into my forehead and stuff like that, like, evil and just horrible, crazy things, and basically, I overdosed a couple of times after that. Um, and it came to the point I went even worse. And uh, I had police come to my house uh, multiple times. Uh, they came to the house twice in, you know, two days in a row. 
And um, that's when, obviously, uh, the second time, uh, they obviously put me on the phone down to uh, Esford Hospital and I got sectioned from that point. And uh, I ended up getting sober for a couple of days. It didn't really help because I was drinking all the time and I, you know, so... But I, the only reason I was drinking was to get rid of the thoughts, and the only reason I was using coke was to get, was to blank it all out. But in the end, I think it started making it worse, and I was constantly on it. Then you know, so yeah. I mean, it's heavy. I mean, it is. It is uh, something you hear about with drugs. Obviously, I want to take this opportunity to give a sort of mention to people who are using drugs and, and are into that sort of lifestyle. I mean, given what you've been through, what are your thoughts on, on that now? Because I'm guessing you'd advise them not to do it, but I can also get my head around why people do it. Because a lot um, of people, I know. speak to a lot of younger kids, and they actually, there's a lot of people who actually really look up to me, just the fact that they know I've been through quite a bit, right? Um, and every time I speak to them, they actually, they, they could be in a pub right now. <laughs> And I could just sit there and they're, they're like 18 or 19, whatever, a bit younger than me. And I could sit there and they'll literally listen to me. But, you know, they'd be like, whoa, respect. And, you know, it's, it's actually nice that because I know, you know, I, I, I got a sense of what they sort of go in through. So I'm trying to put them off that sort of, you know, the drug path thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and if people are watching this and they're listening to this, whether, whether they know you or whether this is the first time they've heard about you and they're sort of getting a feel for it, what and they're using drugs and they're into that sort of lifestyle, I mean, what, what would you say to them as like a message? Because I'm going to put this out there and it'll be like, obviously it'll be in Wales, but it'll be other parts of the UK and stuff. And I'm just curious if, if you have a message you'd say to end up and sort of filter on down, if you get what I mean. Anyone offers you drugs? If anyone offers you any sort of drugs, especially cocaine, because cocaine, I tell you what, it really is the devil, right? And just, no, but it's, it's not really much I can say to anyone because they could be going through worse than what I'm in, and that's their coping mechanism, you know? But if there was one thing I could say is, don't not touch cocaine. <laughs> uh, you know, yeah. it's just bad big time. Yeah, I mean it does. It, it, I tell you something, and not to get into it too much, but like I think in in Wales we have a big, big drugs problem, like especially yeah. in, in the. Well, I, when I I came back from uh, my mother's place about two months ago now, and I was out there for a month, and the culture out there is amazing. The people out there are so nice, you know, they're so friendly, and then I come back and I I was really depressed, but I I was like, you know, I'm. I'm back sort of square one, you know, I'm yeah. looking around and, you know, I'm just, every, everyone, 90%, 96% of people in the pub, you know, doing drugs, like, you know, it's, it's crazy. I, but the thing is, in the valleys especially, it's not, it's not much to do around here at all. And the only thing you can do is be born into a rich family or succeed in, something really well and that's the only way you could get rec rec uh, recognition around here yeah well something else with that i mean it's so that was a visit to the czech republic was it like that would do went back home yeah um, yeah I went, I went to see uh i went to see my um my family up there dead yeah and it's a different i mean this is the thing it, it is a very very different culture you know and i'm not i'm not down on wales because that's where i'm from and born and raised like you, but at the same time, it's I I've got a mixed heritage as well. I got like Italian, and I got Norwegian, and I got all different things. And when you when you meet people from these other places, the culture it's so different. You know the things they do with their time and the things they're into, and they've got more. Um, I'd go so far as to say they got a nicer social network in the sense that when they socialize, it doesn't have to be about getting stoned or getting pissed or whatever. It can actually be around like just eating or going to concerts and things, and it's, it's a very different vibe, it's hard to put into words, like, you know. Um, even though I love Wales, and this is where I'm from, we've got, we've got a big problem with that type of thing, as you said. Yeah. Like, it's the same where I am, in like in like the Barry sort of area and everything. Um, just everybody, like, like a certain age, you just, they're just, they're just fucked up. And the thing is, I've seen a development of it, like even in, in the valleys, even going to clubs and going to places like that, and people are doing 
particularly doing coke and that, you know, and things. You can actually see some people get really nervous and really paranoid and start acting weird. I like yeah, people like that's and, they'll turn on you and they'll just turn on you and like just just switch, you know, and it and it can make you feel a bit like, you know, I don't know what the word is, but like almost a bit nervous because you think like yeah. how's that how's that person going to be? Because they can just like that, they can just change it up completely from being friendly to being like thinking you've said something about them or you've done something to them. When yeah. you have you know what I mean? It's, uh... but, but people, people were thinking that about me, right? And like I said, obviously the word spreads. I, I was ill in, in myself. I weren't, I weren't really gonna do anything to anyone else, you know. And, you know, but it, it was obviously the word was spread, and all my friends do, and people saw again a bit, you know, a bit thingy on saying I was unpredictable and to be around with, sort of thing. I, but I'm the nicest guy you'll ever meet, you know. I. But it's not my fault for the way I am, you know. I, I can't, I can't help what I go on. That's that's just that, really. Like, yeah. Well, I mean, the thing about the valleys and the thing about Wales is one of the things we do have going for us is we have community and we have people we can we can rely on. But the downside of that is obviously gossip and stuff, and and gossip yeah. is a big problem, you know. Um, and people people do gossip about people, and people do try and sort of embarrass people, and and. Especially that everyone knows everyone around you, like yeah. you know. it's, it's a bad, it's a small-minded thing that I think we have in in Wales, but a lot of small, like small countries or small areas do have it. Um, but okay, so so moving this forward a little bit more of some of these experiences, because you obviously you do seem like a great guy. I mean, you've got a heart of gold in there, and I wouldn't be on this call otherwise. You know what I mean? If, if unless there was something like that going on, but. Um, moving this forward a bit to the present day, I mean, did these experiences that you were having actually go away, or is it something that you still have to live with and cope with even now? Like that's that's when I wanted to, I, when I wanted to talk about that actually. Um, so I was going down to the doctors, and, and they can really work it out what to do. They put me on loads of different medication, but and honestly, I, it was one. I've been on. They, they, they put me on anti. Uh, they put me on antipsychotics, um, which you're only on after a little bit, like. And then they put me on uh, butazepine, which is just like an antidepressant and helps you sleep. Um, then they put me on uh, what do you call it? Um, diazepam uh, for a couple of weeks, and then he put me. It, it was just a mixture all the time. But um, do you know what? I had a friend who got sectioned as well, and he got schizophrenia. And uh, he's a very, very good friend, one of my most loyalist friends, right? Um, he started talking me into um, microdosing psychedelics, but right? And so I started doing, and I, I look really deep into things. So I started doing uh, a lot of research on um, microdosing, which I have heard about from not only that, but the news and stuff like that. Um, and that was, that's the best thing that's ever happened to me, but. Literally, it's microdosing. Yeah. I don't know if you do that yourself, like, but. Uh, I haven't yeah. tried it. I've, I've not tried it myself. Um, I've heard of people who who have. I got some good mates. Funny enough, one of my really really good mates. Um, I won't mention his name just because he might not like me to say. But basically, one of my really good mates from from the valley. He's, he's not in the UK now. He's he's in another place, but he's a DJ. Um, yeah. He's a really, talented guy and he um spoke to me a lot about microdosing and he was doing like magic mushrooms and this sort of thing but like in very very small doses one like in a big dose yeah. type yeah, um, yeah. and he yeah, was saying yeah. to me that it really sort of opened him up and, and things like that and uh really sort of changed his world view type of thing um, yeah and he's yeah. a very sensitive guy very aware of like people's feelings very empathic if, if you get what i mean and everything and uh he was saying it really helped him. I come back to that now because I want to talk about that. But I want to get your thoughts on this as well. What is your thoughts on like medications like what you were saying about antipsychotics and this type of thing versus natural um, things? So like the symptoms you had on those versus. So, uh, you know I mean? oh, sorry. <laughs> no, I'm just going to say like, but you get what I mean. Like the comparison between like what you're doing with basically using like a natural remedy type of thing with. with yeah. So I, I've been on, um, I've been on, well, I was on antidepressants for about six years, I think it was. <clears throat> um, and 
it's just it's a thing i i i get a bit too deep like i don't know but this thing is called the penal gland it's right in the center it's third eye that's what everyone calls it right um and the only way you can activate that is if you meditate or do you know things but you know psychedelics bit by bit and that is to tell you what it's the best like i said it's the best thing i ever done was microdose on them shrooms and you know it, it really it really has helped really has helped last couple of months especially like i don't have any anxiety i, I sleep well i i just you know, I, I, I feel great like i feel confident i don't feel when i i, I was still on these tablets and they were like numbing like i didn't i didn't have no feelings for no one i just think if someone died i'd be like ah oh, you know there we go like it's, it's, there it is that's, that's just that like you know but with these you know when what i might do now it, it makes you feel something again it, it makes you feel good you know it, it's nice you know yeah. Uh, yeah i mean it's something that uh it's something that i do believe in i mean it's like you know when you get into this stuff with medications and what a lot of medications do to people um you, it's you shocking don't, you, you don't know. even in this you know it's it's just the, you no one knows what's in there but you go on, on the psychedelic side of things and it's more natural like you know yeah. when i say it comes from the earth i mean one of the things is that to, you know i've seen this a lot with people like even like i say friends of mine the people i know um and i even like you know what i do with the photography and stuff i was even spending a bit of time recently with frank bruno the boxer and he, he talks about this because obviously they put him on some heavy stuff and, and we were at a, at a venue you might know the Valley Tavern in like Blackwood sort of area, but we were up there and, he, and we were waiting in the back room for him to come on stage and for me to do his photos. And I was chatting with him and he was, and I was saying to him like, what do these medications do? How do you feel on them? Blah, blah, blah. And he was basically saying that he was zombified. You know, that's how he described Yes, me. literally how, how, how you feel. Yeah. And it's like no feeling, no life in, in them at all. Like, you know, and I was like, bloody hell, is that what they're doing to people? And I know people might have to take them temporarily. I mean, that's cool, but like, uh, you know, because it might stable things out, but, and I'm not saying don't do it, because what works for one person might not work for another, but I think if people stay on it a long time, it, it can really, like, take the soul out of you, type of thing, you know, it's, it's really... Or it does, that's what, exactly what the idea, how you people are trying to do, but to be honest, mm -hmm. they don't really want anyone to wake up, like, in reality, in the real reality of things, you know? Yeah. Well, what about the spiritual side of it then? I mean, we can we can go deep with this. Now, remind me in a minute, because I want to come back to the fighting and the hybrid boxing and some of the other yeah, stuff. But yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do you think of, like, the spiritual? I mean, obviously, we're, you know, we're both, um, we were talking about this, we're both friends with certain people who, who know about mediumship and certain things. You know, we've got mutual friends with that and everything. Uh, what do you think? A lot of people who've had um mental illness or, or use drugs and things they have spiritual experiences I and mean, a lot of people i've spoken to have spiritual experiences and they can be very negative they can be very positive but a lot of people swear that they've experienced things outside of themselves bigger than themselves whatever you want to call it and i'm not into religion but i'm 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 yeah. with it on spirituality because you know we all have these experiences have you experienced things like that like when you say about awakening and of course uh, i've uh, i've done um like i was saying earlier i used to have uh, really bad nightmares as a kid right and mm -hmm. um they used to be very lucid and ever since i've grown up i've had really really lucid dreams about crazy things that have happened yes you know that that has that has happened afterwards and i'm like yeah you know have you ever had that have you ever had like a lucid dream and something happens and yeah. I like, actually. yeah, and like you know, you could talk about alternate universes, just crazy stuff like that. But um, yeah, spiritual side of things. I'm really, I'm a really spiritual guy. Like, so I, I do, um, I do believe in higher entities and people of the past. I'm like uh, information to and stuff like that. You know, um, that's why I do believe in anyway for a greater cause. Like, yeah. I think so. I mean, I, I mean, personally, I've had these types of experiences, and you know, it's um, it, it's it's a big subject to get into. But I'm with you on where you're coming from, type of thing. I tell you, there's a there's a thing. It's called the spirit molecule, 
And if you smoke this, it's called DMT, right? And if you smoke this, you just, it opens up like the, the third eye, they call it, like I was on about earlier. And uh, you go into some other dimension, but <laughs> this is crazy, right? And the dreams you have afterwards, I, I was dreaming. What, what my job was, what I really wanted to be as a kid, right? I wanted to be um, a paratrooper, which is obviously in the army. Um, but obviously something happened. I couldn't get in because of medication and that I was on. So anyway, long story short, done something else. But um, <clears throat> I was dreaming about, I was in the paras. I was in the sky and I knew I was dreaming, but it felt totally real. And after that, it went on to like another dream. And this was the day after I smoked this thing. And this thing only lasts 10 minutes, mind. But obviously, you, your penile gland wants more of that, you know? So I was dreaming that uh, I seen my um, my ancestors who were, you know, past and stuff like that. And I was speaking to them proper, like, you know, I knew I was dreaming. I knew I, w I was in this dream. And they were telling me, oh, yeah, we're, we're this. <laughs> I know it's sounds nuts, like, but if mm. anyone out there have done it, they they understand. Like, this is absolutely crazy. And after I was like, it's been blown away from it ever since, really. Like, well, I've heard. I mean, personally, I've not, I've not tried it. You know, I mean, I've not tried yeah. a lot of drugs. I, I've tried a couple I think of everyone things. needs to try it. In my in my opinion, just to really know what they're looking for and really know what 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 they really are like. You know. No. Life. It's interesting. It is interesting. But how do you know when you when you take your nap? I mean, how do you know that it's positive? Because it, what I find interesting with this is you were like using like the cocaine and it was negative, but you're yeah. using this and it's positive, so it sort of flips it on its head type of thing. DMT is already in you and it's also in uh, trees, in uh, other animals, stuff like that. And if you the only way you can release it is if uh, you meditate long enough, you see it. Have you ever seen like uh, Buddhas and stuff and they're there, you know, doing, hmm, mm -hmm. and, you know, stuff like that, releasing energy? Well, when they meditate, then they're actually going into this other dimension without even smoking DMT. The only way you can activate DMT is if you really, you know, if you smoke it. And, yeah. you know, I mean, it's for these Buddhas and all that, they've been training their whole lives to be Buddhas and stuff like that, you know, or, you know, and uh, they, that's their lifestyle, like they, they live by that, like, you know? Yeah. Well, this is the thing, is I've heard of a lot of people, I, I know people who are into that sort of thing, and they're using, like, sound healing, um, energy healing, meditation, and they're using, like, natural, even yoga and stuff, like natural techniques, you know, and things. And, and it's interesting. I mean, that's more, that's more personally the world I've been interested in and things like that. But I hear you on, like, natural remedies and stuff, because, and there's a lot of things like this with homeopathy and, um, other things you can put in your body and things like that that are, that are you know, plant-based, basically. And they're not made of all this toxic, poisonous stuff, you know. And it's uh, it's a whole other subject, um, uh, that, that, you know, that people can get into and, and things like that and change your diet and things. And it's like I got really bad allergies to certain foods <coughs> and I have to eat a certain way and things like that. And I'm also anemic, uh, if you ever heard yeah. that myself. And I... Basically, I, I take natural supplements for it, so it's nothing man-made at all, it's just like some opinions and there's not enough of it in our food. But at the same time as that, I also, um, have basically, I don't want to say I've cured it, but I've got it into like a balanced level with using only natural stuff and using nothing man-made at all, you know? And there's a lot of people out there who've cured, I mean, there's even people out there who've cured like cancer and cured like really serious illnesses using natural um, remedies, you know? So I... I Medicine's got its place, but I think I can understand that. Coming back to the fighting side of things as well, because during this time, you also have made like a sort of comeback. You had a hybrid boxing fight, Welsh combat series, four ounce gloves, and you got the guy out of there. It was the first round, wasn't it? I mean, it was quick. You got him out of there, like, you know. Um, yes. Okay. I, uh, this is a funny one. <laughs> so <coughs> um, I talked this fight all about. It's like, oh, I got a key. To, uh, it was like, I wasn't even ready for this, right? I, I'll be honest with you. I was meant to go to rehab the week before the fight, right? And uh, I never turned up. And everyone was, you know, my, uh, not everyone, my family side of uh, things were trying to stop me fight there. And uh, I thought, nah, nah, I, I got I to release something, you know? 
Um, and I heard this guy, he had a, a lot, of, I think he had more fights to me, and I'm sure he had more fights to me, but they were all unlicensed. And I haven't been in the ring for five years, so that was good for me, really, you know. Um, yeah, he got in. Well, Frog is drawing 30 seconds. <laughs> so, yeah, i I'd done really good, but I, I felt like I needed more now, you know. I, I didn't feel like I released enough what I had in me, like. But uh, yeah. it's fault for now, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was a, it was a cracking win, and shout out to... to... Uh, George Ward, didn't it? You know your opponent uh, as well. Yeah, yeah, um, nice guy as well. I was speaking to him, mm. uh, speaking to him after the fight, like, but uh, he had to make a move, didn't he? So, can really much bad. Yeah. Well, you know, he, um, yeah, I mean that that hybrid. I mean, it, it is brutal as anything, man. I mean, it's, it's close. Obviously, it's close to playing that, isn't it? I mean, uh, yeah, it's a dangerous mm. sport, but and uh, I'm glad. I'm actually really glad that they've. Uh, They've got the sport in uh, Wales because it's something new. And do you know what? It was something I really wanted to try out. Um, I did ask for a big AB match with, um, I can't remember his name now, Jim Rowe, I think it was. Or, so I was saying the uh, uh, promoter of big AB. Yeah. Um, but uh, he said he'd get back to me on the fight and say that. But uh, he never did find an opponent, uh, opponent for me. So um, I let things slide of that. But what I'm going to do now, I've... Uh, so, well, I joined a different gym now in Flower. Um, and I think I'm going to well, try and turn pro and try and go for gold, like, you know? Yeah. Well, that's so, good. I mean, because I was going to ask you about that, about the future, because you st- obviously you're still young, so you've still got, like, a lot. And even when I was speaking with Jackson the other day, um, he was saying about this. He was saying, obviously, Kieran, you, know, you can go a long way in boxing. I agree with that. You've got a lot of potential. You know, you've had some good, um, obviously some good wins and stuff, but you've got a lot left in the tank type of thing. And uh, I would say a bright, like a bright future in the game. So that's your plan now, go pro and, and sort of work your way up, win some belts there and everything, yeah? Yeah, I don't want to leave it because, you know, years ago, I, I was known as one of the other sitting guys in my weight, like, and I was training for Wales every weekend, stuff like that. And to let that slide, I, I can't bat them. I, you know, I could have been in the Commonwealth Games, but if I didn't, broke my, you know, didn't break my hand at the time, I, I could have done a lot of things, and it all, it all just got tracked out. It was like I didn't really have any luck for for that. Like it was just, you know, that's just my luck, really. Like <laughs> crappy luck. So yeah. I, I'm gonna well, try. Uh, sorry. Give it, no, it's all right, but just give it another go. I mean, that's the main thing at the end of the day. I mean, you know, you've been you. I mean, basically, you've been to hell and back. But like, you know, I mean, there's no two ways to there's no other way to put it, really. But like from here, I can see there being a very bright future. And I'm not just saying that. I mean, like I say, you know, you got the you got the drive, and as long as you, in in the nicest way, like as long as you stay focused and that sort of thing, you can go a long way with it, you know. And it's uh, it's I hope you do because uh, everyone's got a lot of respect for you and a lot of respect for your abilities. Um, so I'd say now with you know being in in the low. Now it's time like for the high type of thing, you know. Um, that's my hope for you, if you if you get what I mean. Um, yeah, um, yeah. It's only now I've started realizing, you know, the people I was following, you know, the bad people and whatever. Like, and I, I'm just so glad to be to be out of that. You know, I, I thought I was cool because I was following with everyone all over me and stuff like that. You know, like you know, quite bad people. Like, and uh, I'm just glad I got out of that to be myself, really, to be who, who I'm really meant to be like you know so yeah yeah Yeah. that's it i mean well you know that's a powerful lesson actually for people because um at the end of the day like who you associate with who you hang out with and spend time with that's who you become yeah so you become that's it spot on i mean they say that predicts your future where you'll be in five years you take a look at the people you you know that are around you basically losers and I say that and I don't say that to look down on anybody because it doesn't matter but if, if they're people with bad intentions or they don't have goals they don't have ambition they don't have this positivity about them it's going to fuck your life up you know at the end of the day and you're going to get out of that and surround yourself with people who are going in a good direction you know it's, it's very very important and it's uh it's good to hear that you've done that obviously we'll we'll wrap it up shortly because we you know we've talked about some good stuff and and for people's attention spans, I don't want it to be too long. But um, 
we've got your message about the, the, the drugs and, and not doing them across. Um, what what would you say to anybody who wants to succeed in some form of um, combat, or not even combat sports, but what would you say to somebody who wants to succeed in life? I mean, things that, that you've done right, things that you've done wrong. We've all done plenty of both, but the lessons <laughs> you've learned along the way, what would you say to people like some of these youngsters Never mind drugs now, but like they just they want to do well, they want to apply themselves to something, whether it's sports or something else. What would you say to those people? Just be your own person and uh, do not ever drink and don't fall into other people's traps. Just be, just be who you are and succeed in what you want to succeed in. Um, that's about that, right? <laughs> yeah, it's a good lesson. Very, very good lesson. Um, I want to give a, a mention as pretty much the last thing, one of the last things to the people who do support you because obviously we've talked a lot about your journey but it sounds like when you were going through some of this stuff, there, as much as there were people who were sort of leading you the wrong way and, and messing you up a bit, there were also people who were trying to help by the sound of it and they, you know, they were being genuine and being good. So whoever it is in your life, whether it's coaches, whether it's family, friends, sponsors, I mean it doesn't matter, but just the loyal people who, who support you or have supported you. I'd like to give them a mention because obviously it's not just you on the journey, it's a whole, you know, it's a group thing. So what would you say to the people who've, who've had your back, basically? And, and well, I'll tell you what, my mother, right, really started to get, she, at first, it was hard to uh, really describe. I told my mother, I, my mom was sad and they see me in the worst state imaginable, you know, um, and... I see only, I had, you know, I had friends, but they didn't really understand. It'd be like, you know, sleep over mine, you know, I'll, I'll help you out and stuff. But because they were on it as well, it, it will not, it probably make me worse. And I, I respect them for, you know, I, I love my friends. The friends I got today, are my friends for life, you know, but um, it wouldn't have helped me. So. I had to, you know, I, I, I got it out myself. You know, I'm not 100 percent there yet, but I got it out myself, and that's the only way that it's going to be done. Is if I stick, you know, in this house, trapped in my room or whatever, whatever, whatever it's going to be. That's that's the way it's going to be. Like to be 100 percent, you know. So yeah. yeah. Well, it's good to give them a mention the people who've helped you and, and the people who've been here for you. Um, and your supporters, because obviously, even with the fight at the last combat, you know, you had some good supporters there and everything as well. So, you know, it's um, it's nice to see. I think the future is very, very bright for you. I'm not just saying that. I really feel that. Um, okay. Stay focused, though, man, because, you know, it's, it's, it's easy to get caught up in, in things. But the only thing I'd say as well is this interview. I really think my hope and my vision for this is that it just, if it even touches one person, you know, and, and sort of, Makes them make some changes or think twice about what they're doing and how they're living. Um, then it's worth doing, you know. I mean, hopefully it'll it'll, it'll reach more people. But you know, um, it's it's hard to break through people's habits. You know what they believe they they're doing, what they believe is cool. But at the end of the day, um, you know you you know better than most where it leads. So hopefully we can steer a few people onto a a better path, you know. And you can still have fun and you can still enjoy life, but you don't have to up your head up and, and be completely um you know go through hell and back at the end of the day you know um so it's it's one of those things anything else you'd like to say to your fans and supporters out there before we before we close out uh, anything you would? thanks for everyone to support me for the boxing throughout the boxing world like and also uh, i gotta mention a few of the boys that you who really have helped me out uh sorry about that. No, it's <laughs> so, all good. Uh, uh rory thank you bro <laughs> <laughs> I know it sounds nuts. Lee, uh, Lloyd, Kane, Cameron, um, Christ, Mike, and if I miss anyone out, I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> I'm Jackson, also Jackson. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, right. Well, no, that's good. That's, that is good to give them a shout out. I want to say thank you for your time, champ. Thank you for coming on here. And honestly, it takes a lot of balls to do this. You know, I mean, I'm serious. Because, Absolutely, man. Yeah. yeah, it takes a lot of heart to do this, and you, you know, you've got to really, uh, you've got to really. Yeah, you know, like I used to, you imagine talking about all I like. I said, uh, you know, any anything to train out people and anything 
for the recognition, really, as well, you know, in the boxing yeah. side of things. So, well, that's uh, it. It should help with, with your exposure with that as well. I mean, that's yeah. obviously, at the end of the day, um, that is what you do. And yeah, with the awareness side of things as well, with the, with the drugs and stuff, it hopefully it helps on both sides, you know. But, mate, I want to say a big thank you for coming on the show. It's been awesome. You bought my heart. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brad. That's all that. right, mate. I support anyone who's got a, a good heart and a good soul and stuff, you know, regardless of where we're all from or what we've all done. Some of the people have got good intentions, and that's what counts for me. Thank you very much for watching. Um, please subscribe to the Simply Inspired YouTube channel and there will be more videos coming soon.